of the Alaskast. I'm Austin Manolik. And I'm Landon Albertson. Just a couple average bros trying to be above average. Trying to fill that freezer and make a little less wall space. But in the end, it's all about the adventure. A big secret as far as what he's drawn. And we kind of just had like three days where we didn't talk. <laughs> and uh, he sent me a, you know, like a, that bear meme that says like, point to where the Alaska draw hurts. You know, this little stuffed bear, like point to where it hurts. And I was like, I burnt that bear. I set it on fire. <laughs> where did he hurt you? Where like, did he? Like Austin calls me or texts me probably daily. You, you got no sound? I got no sound. Fire me up. We're just rolling. Um, Maybe I do. And I just have like terrible hearing. Oh, no, I do. Okay. Well, I can hear you just in. fine. Okay, cool. Now it's coming back. Okay. 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 So it's just, it's just your own ears. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. I can't. I have CHS. <laughs> Can't hear shit. <laughs> Terrible hearing. Um, so sorry if I lo- loud talk you and you're listening to this or heavy like mouth breathe. Something's going on up all up and in this area. <laughs> all right. So. so so anyways, Austin calls me probably daily or at least texts me. I didn't hear from him for three days. <laughs> Ghosted. He, he's just he just uh, silent. Just treatment. bitter. Just kind of bitter, but I know this not to be a bitter Betty because anytime you get excited for the draws, it seems like you don't draw. It just doesn't happen. Yeah, I was pretty shocked that we got a tag being Ruby and I, and uh, last year was definitely nothing for either of us, so I wasn't expecting anything. Oh, yeah. you Okay, so you guys drew a caribou hunt, right? Yes. Okay, yeah, now I remember. But the year before that... Ruby and I drew the muskox tag. Yep. Which, like, I want to get into because that's like just a, it was just a badass adventure from start to fin- uh, start to finish. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but <clears throat> I don't so really want to talk so about Derek, what Landon you, drew. You drew tags this year. I drew one tag, uh, DC five ninety, and I oh, party sweet. hunted with uh, my girlfriend, so she also has it as well. Okay, excellent. I had the DC five ninety last year, Ooh, and did I get killed, a good one. I killed a toad. Yeah, <laughs> beefy, yeah. beefy boo. Yeah, I want to see a picture. Ruby had it two years ago and got a really good one, and we saw three others that were as bigger, bigger. Did you, did you guys fly in? Yeah. Okay. You? Yeah, that's the way to do it. But, yeah, I flew in and shot mine on the third day, or second day, I guess, of hunting, and the pack out was just miserable. <laughs> it was like four miles in the dark, and um, but the boo, I was like, surprised when i walked up to it like oh my gosh this thing is huge that's how ours went too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big that, boo i like it. big moose are cool big rams are cool goats i mean they're they're just cool but i think the the caribou in alaska are the most magnificent it's pretty impressive and especially when they get the white cape yeah. star horns yeah that like white chest mm. and just oh. like a symbol of alaska i feel it is is it something like the, is it on the Alaska crest, or is it uh, like on ADF and G? You can see their their little emblem logo, their seal. What is that called in Game of Thrones? Your yeah. banner. Oh, <laughs> I I is, that isn't <laughs> brought everybody into the nerdville. <laughs> the um, Game of Thrones. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna reference Harry Potter next. Can be real bad. Uh, <laughs> so we're talking about draws. Uh, today we are joined with uh, Derek Blake, OG Alaskan. We we uh, grew up together. We've got some really good stories. Uh, you got Mr. Manelik and the Landuski, the big Landuski over here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're not drinking. We we should start doing White Russians. If you brought that up last time, Mission Alaskas, we start doing that. Okay. But right now we're drinking um, King Street uh, beers. Do you guys have which which beer did you get? I got the. I got the 9.0 with you, but the you, Imperial. You got the Imperial. Why'd they give me this cute cup and you got the beefy cup? I don't know. Wait, did you get a glass or did you get the... Cheers. I, yeah, cheers. I, I got what they gave me. Yeah. That's it's, cute. Oh. <laughs> I thought about getting the growler. You're like, you're like, I'm paying. And I was like, fill this up. Should, yeah. First time Austin yeah. goes on a rant, I'm running downstairs for more beer. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm going to go down a rabbit hole. On his rabbit All hole. Right. We'll just walk away. Just <laughs> let him finish okay. his thought. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Uh, so before we get into too much of the draw results, the unveiling of the Landuski's draw, 
I know you've been bitter, but I'm I'm saving that. You want to do some AK news? First? The AK, I don't have any. I mean, I do, but I, you know, we've been drowning people currently in the fish regulations, and like some of these fish regulations, I don't know if they've uh, if they will affect you. Derek. We're not on my cycle, so next December is going to hit my area with Port of Fish. So they break down all of the areas, and then it transfers around, and uh, it's a third-year cycle for everybody. So everybody gets a turn in third, three years. Okay, there we go. See, I sit on an advisory committee, which doesn't mean anything because the Board of Fish, the Board of Game, they're going to vote however they're going to vote anyways based on public testimony testimony and then individuals such as yourself and there's like there's lobbying happen happening when you're right. there at the meeting so there's all these things as far as like fish politics game politics there's stuff that happens that people have no idea about it's good. it's pretty fascinating and that's what's great about being on that committee is you know what's going on and you know when you need to get lobbying support for something that's going to affect you or something you care about absolutely and i i told landon so landon came and we didn't really reveal um that we had any kind of relationship. I'm like, you've got to come because there's some hot topic, <laughs> like buttons that are getting pressed tonight. You wait. Mm-hmm. We had a subcommittee meeting and I was like, oh, some, some people showed up. But these subcommittees, <clears throat> if the subcommittee votes a certain way, and everybody's in, the, you know, with, through the email and through the Public Information Act, once the subcommittee votes, and if nobody has an issue with it, it goes on through, and that goes to the Board of Fish for our how we voted on the proposal. And so I said, I know that tonight there's going to be more people that show up for the actual committee meeting versus the sub. And basically, we hashed all these big ones out. And some of these big um, proposals for the uh, Matsu Advisory Committee, they turned. So there was an early archery yeah. moose season registration uh, in the Matsu Valley. Uh, and basically from the, in the subcommittee meeting, it got shot down, but in this committee meeting, it got turned. And so like, and that's the one that stands. So I but, saw, and also the late season moose, they, they accepted the late season moose. It was, it was, oh, it was, it was the ten, late season. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't the early not, season. Not late season. Well, 10 days after 10 days after registration. Yeah. There. Okay. There it is. Mm-hmm. I have short, but excellent memory. So that's why I don't do short news. Cause it turns into long news and then it turns into lame news. <laughs> So I'll shut her down there. Um, the draw results just came out and it seems like any time that I ever look, <laughs> I don't draw. And the technique for me that I've learned for the luck is just don't ever look. And then people will let you know. I would agree with that. That's been, I, I have not drawn a lot of tags in my life, but almost every time somebody let me know before I got to it. Mm-hmm. Not me, dude. This year, I could not sleep. I just knew. I just knew that something good was about to happen. I screwed you up. I was the reason. <laughs> oh, I guess I would. And screw you up. I, I want to hear it. Up. What did you get? I, I called him the night before and said, you drew you drew big. Maybe it was a text. Uh-huh. You something ju- came through. You, you, you pulled one of those. Oh, you can't believe what you drew. They, they came out early. <laughs> <laughs> he, tried, he tried the old text. So I was like, no, shut it, dude. I, I did it to a couple people, Landon, my brother, and then the bowl I got last year. Oh, beautiful. Cedric and Cedric isn't on here, but so Cedric's drawn three sheep, three sheep tags in the last five years. He drew Friday Creek, uh, like, and then another one that was just in that general area, like the year after. And then this year he draws toke. And he's Coach been you, in, early or late? Not, oh, not, not you, the Cedric. Yeah, 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 Cedric. I'm like, oh my gosh, Cedric, how did you do that? He's like, I don't know. We, I called him on the phone. I was like, you don't know. He's like, I just woke up. I'm like, oh man. So oh, that's a tank, dude. So <laughs> that was in that same unit too. Yeah. Oh wow, man, that's a producer. Oh yeah. And yeah, uh, and I, everything I hear about that area and people talk about big ones, like I said, we saw three bigger than this. And you know, I had my girlfriend early hunting experience for her and this one, just great opportunity. And I was like, <laughs> it's good enough. Shoot that one. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. You guys both got me salty, even even saltier over here. Well, I also oh have Austin gosh. to thank for a lot of this caribou too, because we had something, and I'm just going to stoke his ego a little bit here because he's been crushed about his draw results. But uh, we, we are going to have a good uh, guide that uh, I know and have hunted with and worked with. And he was the day draw results came out for this hunt, called him up and was like, can you drop us? He's like, absolutely. He used that area. He knows him. He gets big stuff all the time. He's dropped me off for sheep and uh, goat. 
And uh, when it came time for us to go in, we took the ferry out of Cordova, we drove up, we got all of our gear, we're ready to go. And he's like, man, I'm a little backed up. If you can give me a couple days, we're like, we're not going to worry too much. And then a couple days later, starting to get a little more worried, he's blowing us off. And I'm like, we only have so many more days. And then it was like desperation mode. I'm like, Austin, we need to collect some people here like who can fly me and uh i need to get to the juice you know i i uh knew our friend uh, brian turner but not that well and he's like just just go for it i'll talk to him too and i i hate asking for anything and it's like man can you help me and we got together and he was like yeah i can get you in in a couple days and we only had a couple days to hunt at the end of the season but we made it work that's awesome oh in a big way too nice bull it was cool beautiful it was cool to be a part of it because then I was all there. I was, the, I was doing the pump up. I was doing the cheerleading. They're going out. I'm there. I'm like, okay, they're gone. I'm getting in reaches, you know, like that's to me. I'm like, yes. yes so you were yes. just like the little coach on the side. I call him the plays. Yes. She had yes. shot her caribou yes. and I unreached him and we're like, mega bowl. It's, it's good. It's good. We're happy. You know, I'm getting video. Everything's it's cut, turned out really well. And, uh, while I'm working on it, Ruby yells, honey badger. <laughs> and, I up, and I'm like, that's a wolverine oh, running wolverine. across the, high, uh, the skyline. Oh, wow. And so I just instantly go for her gun because I had a 338. She had a six and a half Creedmoor and I go for her gun. I don't even know how she thought to pull out her phone, but she pulls out her phone and starts videoing and the thing's running across the skyline. It stops. I'm almost on it and it start, takes off running again. I'm like, I got to shoot this thing running. <laughs> and I dumped it. So it's dead, it's down, and I had read the regulations beforehand, and I was 99% sure that I read that Wolverine was open, but then I'm texting, <laughs> I was like, is Wolverine open? Because <laughs> I want, like, clarification. <laughs> Ask, asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just before I, sh- in case I see one, just and in I case. shot it. Yeah, and then he's like, it is. I'm like, got one. <laughs> <laughs> Good, I just shot now. Sweet. Uh, that's awesome. That's funny. These just predators should be open. Wolverine should be open. Wolf should be like that's my thought on that. Like wolf should be open year round, mm-hmm. everywhere. Like they're just yeah. I mean, a, how many opportunities do you have to shoot a predator? It was no. so slim. Most of the time, you don't have a gun when you see them. Most of the time, they're there and gone. Mm, they you, pulled down you your pants. Three thirty eight. I had a 338. Oh. She had a six and a half Creedmoor. I grabbed a oh, Creedmoor. Okay. Gotcha. I thought you, <laughs> you 338 and <laughs> dusted him. <laughs> I so was thinking about pieces. a foot and a half. About a foot, I let it and I hit it in the middle of the back. So Nice. That's awesome. That was far sweet. A uh, couple hundred yards, 210, I think, was what we wow. were in. It, it, nice. it was good. The iPhone footage, though, was sweet because you it just looks like you know, running. <laughs> Is he shooting a marmot? What is that? A ferret? You know, he's laying down. Looks real athletic. Lays down. This dude knows what's up. He gets prone. Prone. (laughs) Just leads him. Oh yeah, it was it was legit. You got a YouTube or what's that video on? Uh, It's actually on that post I just showed you. And then a year ago uh, or a year and a half ago when it happened, I did post it on my Instagram and. Uh, I don't get too many haters, but I get some haters here and there. And that one went viral and it got reposted. I think I had 140 something comments and a lot of them were oh. death threats. And like, this <laughs> <laughs> I did not appreciate it. My, I did not appreciate the shot. I am going to come to Cordova and find you. I know where you live. I'm like, well, you're going to have to spend a lot of money. You must have a lot of hate to, get, to try to even my, mess with me. And my caption, just being the, you know, myself, I'm like, some men practice uh, by shooting paper targets at a range, but. I shoot running over <laughs> it's totally just, just out there and people didn't like it with a lot of that stuff like a lot of people it's like uh, somebody I, I was listening to a podcast with Soul Hunter and uh, Matt Zinger said something or he said I loved uh, or maybe he said I like I don't think he said love that's a little bit strong but he he liked uh, Eminem and 8 Mile when he said this is who I am this is what I'm doing now you've got no ammunition to throw at me. So if you just own up to like, yeah, I was target, you know, I was practice <laughs> yeah. shooting at a running Wolverine. Sorry. Send the, send the hate bombs. You know, yep. mm-hmm. if you fall on it, the, and the guys that aren't obviously our people are going to be like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> knocked him down. You saved a couple of full crow sheep for us. Thank you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah, the haters and the antis are like, Psh, just go away. Go away. I don't even – there should be an algorithm for that to get rid of that. Yeah, to get rid of the 16-year-old girls that can't enunciate or spell and 
<laughs> with people in like I don't know Bafangu, Egypt, or yeah, like South know, America or something. They're always the most random people, and then like one dude that's private with twenty three followers. <laughs> I mean, it's like, who are you? Why are you on my page? Get out of here! I don't. Yeah, I got no time for you. Just get out of here. It's, that's funny. Um, so you had a good hunt. Then we did the the muskox hunt. We still haven't even we still haven't even addressed the elf in the room. Mm-hmm. Big big Landuski. Mm-hmm. Been here for two years. Legitimate no, resident. Five, where five from? Years. Five years. I have, I'm originally from Oregon. Why do Oregon. I think two okay. years? I don't know. You bring that up every single time. <laughs> okay, so it's five times. Well, this is only one beer, so. <laughs> okay, so he's been here for yeah, five years. Five years. How long have you been putting in for the draws, though? Well, four years. I didn't do my first year. Okay. And I've drawn something every single year. Wow. Mm-hmm. That, that's impressive. <laughs> yeah. And this year, he drew something that's more rare than the muskox tag. What's what's more rare than a muskox tag? Well, right off the bat, I'm going to think DS-123, there's only one, so that's the most rare. But then two, more people put in for bison because it's cheaper and more people can do that. So, And brown bear on Kodiak. So those are the three. So if you were willing to bet right now, what did he? What did this band draw? Both right here, the, here? two of those three things. <laughs> 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 I, I, what is it? I, I don't really want to talk. Okay, about so it. I want to tell the story of how how I found out the news. I get to work. I was not productive. Sorry, Providence Imaging Center, but I was not productive for the la- first thirty minutes. All I did was sit at my computer, hit refresh. I try to do a little bit of work, then go back, hit refresh, nothing. So then I go downstairs, start trying to distract myself, and I sit at my computer. Some of my other caregivers are working with a patient, and a notification pops up and says, I I drew this tag. And I was like, oh my gosh, the tags are out. So I sit down on my computer, I put it in, I l- type in Landon Albertson. Okay, scroll down. No, 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 no. Yes. C- no, yes. So I drew two. So then I look over. D I Buffalo. 454. <laughs> you Cop- be sh- Copper River Buffalo. <laughs> Oh man. And I just I just you and I'm just in my tech area. I just clap. Patient looks over at me. Tech looks over at me. I'm like, sorry. <laughs> and then I look down at <laughs> and then I look I look down at what the other yes is. D S one forty. Okay, the archery tag. Archery yep. sheet. So this is Matt. interesting. Uh, you say DI-454, so it's a hunt that uh, I've done twice. Oh, you've done it. You've I've done, done it. it twice, and I'm doing it this year. One of my best friends drew it as well. Wow. So, what? Yeah. Maybe we need to join arms. Well, we can definitely talk about this. Uh, we kind of got a plan together, and uh, with his work schedule, um, I think I think what we're going to do is in the fall schedule, we're going to float it. Mm-hmm. I've done jet boat in the fall and then I've done it on snow machine in the winter and gotten to Buffalo both ways. And uh, we're going to start with floating. So that's something I haven't done yet. And uh, just that, we're just going to keep after it till we get it done. Uh-huh. That's kind of what my first thought was to float it for a few days. If I don't get it, then come up with a different it's, plan. It's really the area is they're either there or they're not, unless you want to pay the, the trespass permit fee. So mm-hmm. they're either on the river or they're not. So you can float it. If they're not there, you can get out. Mm-hmm. Um, there's no sense in sitting and waiting for it to happen, um, which I did for a while and it didn't work. Uh-huh. But uh, the easiest way is snow machine. So it's like you have that whole season length, you're going to get it. Mm-hmm. Um, but we definitely should combine some forces and have some air support to let us know when to go. Yeah, mm. yeah absolutely. Mm. And, um, have you ever done the trespass fee? No. Okay. So with that hunt, for people that don't know what it means, the trust, most of the land is owned by a native corporation. The Atna. Atna uh, Native Corporation. Um, so Do you the, see what they're charging now? Is it still 1500 or is it more? I seen 1600 was the last. 16, so, okay. Um, so when I did a little bit of research, showed the, the um, native land to be able to 
not trespass on it, you have to pay a fee of fifteen or sixteen hundred dollars. So I just said I've got to come. I have to do this, but and I'm very happy for Landon. And you know what? I have <laughs> I, something I'm, for you before I leave. I'm really happy that Sheep Tag is only DS140 because I'm like <laughs> <laughs> we've drawn that before <laughs> the same year. Yeah, we did. We did. That's right. We both didn't get sheep, but we nope. both had opportunity. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, here I you go. Some is, this, is this it? This is that. That's what I have for you. You got you some custom scrubs. What do we got Oregon for, uh, duck scrubs. That's right. Oh, just just nice. let you know that I'm not that peanut butter and jealous. Okay, but I still am. Thanks, brother. We're still friends, right? <laughs> so I'm sorry for the last I'm, three I'm days. Glad, I'm glad we're back on talking terms. <laughs> so he also wants one of your buffalo tenderloins. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. He's going he to go. He's gonna write up an agreement to keep your friendship. And yes, this is yeah. going to include some items. Yeah. Well, I said, uh, <laughs> hey, jet, I'll, I've got a jet boat. Let's go. You know? Actually, you know, that jet boat thing is kind of cool. And that that is easy. I like the idea of a raft, though, because like the quiet and just doing. I want to try that at least once. It's like 40 miles to get from Copper Center to shit though yeah and i don't think it's a very it's not going to be very fast so yeah so what i've heard is like from people that have rafted down and watching buffalo if they hear if they hear a jet boat coming a lot of times the buffalo just move into the woods Mm -hmm. and then come out so i don't know how if that's true or as productive or not but so I would agree with that. I'm, they're actually a lot smarter than you'd think. And I actually just had a friend, uh, his dad drew the Delta Buffalo tag and they got their Buffalo three days ago. Oh, and okay. he was pretty fed up with it by the time they got it done. He's like, I can't believe how fast these things are. And uh, on the second one that we got, we did it on Snow Machine. And uh, my cousin had the tag and he blew his first opportunity because he was too slow on the snowshoes trying to get to where we could get the shot off. And uh, then we... Uh, ended up making it work uh but we had to do the good old ninja sneak and get right in there and of course it's a big animal and of course they're herd animals and you got to be careful about you know shooting one and not shooting into another and you yeah. know if you you they're tough so then it's the second shot you know are you around the right animal and yeah you know we we filmed it and everything but uh it's uh definitely you got to be on your game mm-hmm. yeah i'm super excited about it i've i've seen a couple videos and read a couple different things on um, like different tactics. And then, and then of course, you know, Steve Ranella, he, that was his uh, Buffalo hunt. So I've read mm-hmm. his book twice, but um, while well, you're a lot more educated than I am, <laughs> <laughs> just when I get, um, when I get my mindset on something, like I do as much research and as much preemptive stuff as I can. Right on. But the, like late season hunt i'm more a lot of people haven't really talked too much about like the late february or or uh because the season goes all the way through march 31st so you could um hunt from september 1st through march 31st but once it gets winter i haven't really seen or heard a lot of stories about that you know it's uh that was easy it was really easy um did you guys camp out there or no? Okay, no. We're so kind of like tough. a date. It's kind of like a <laughs> yeah. We did. We um. So we got it the first day we tried, and it was later in the day, and so we field dressed it, and then snow machined out and stayed in Copper Center for the evening, and then the next morning we went back in, and uh, we got it on the bluffs. So the way that you know the on land goes is like everything that's the river bottom. And on the bluff is like gold, but if you're on top of the bluff, you're not gold. And that's mm-hmm. where you're trespassing. We got on the top of the bluff, and it didn't roll. Um, <laughs> 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 and it's oh boy. Uh-huh. And uh, oh, thank you, sir. We uh, carried uh, a snow machine sled. We we brought it up the bluff, which was kind of a pain in the you know and uh we tied the buffalo it took three of us and we were able to roll it onto that and tie it and then we slid that down the bluff okay and then from there we just pulled it by snow machine and pulled it right onto the trailer and then just drove it hole? to my house hole yeah we, oh, we wow. brought in hole and i we backed the trailer into my garage closed the garage and then we're able to take care of it and skin it out and because it was, and, was it frozen solid uh you know it actually wasn't too bad um it wasn't frozen yet and uh and we, we, we got it out first thing the next morning 
and uh yeah the meat was great everything it was a good process uh my cousin was super happy he did a shoulder mount on it and okay you know talks about the story all the time gotcha so where's that where's that video at is that on youtube uh you know what i i think it's on an old computer of mine it was a while back on that one i want to say probably seven or eight years ago okay and then the other one successful one that you did was a jet boat so that was fall so we brought an airboat and a jet boat and actually now that i'm thinking about it we didn't use the jet boat we used the airboat Mm. which is super loud Mm -hmm. and uh we were able to, uh, and we were camping, so we we did spend, we camped the first few days in a big storm, we didn't see anything, and then uh, a couple of days later settled out and we saw some classing and they came down the bluff and we were able to sneak in and she went right on one of the islands in the river. Oh, okay. Excellent. Yeah. So they do come in off the bluffs? They do. Now, okay. I did hear rumor, uh, so I told my dad that uh, my good friend Eric drew this tag and he's like, well... He's like, it's a good thing they're having snow because he's like, the rumor is they haven't been coming down much lately and they have been staying off the river. So I don't know if that has to do with the lack of snow that we've been getting lately or any other conditions, but hopefully next year is going to be more normal and Mm -hmm. they'll be down there. So I've spent a little bit of time jet boating the Chitna, obviously, Mm -hmm. um, area for dipping reds right mm-hmm. but one year i'm like man the reds aren't here this is opening weekend to launch but they're not really here so i'm gonna rip the river and look for bears because there's it's a salmon fed river there's mm-hmm. a lot of bears in there and word on the street is some of those grizz come down before the salmon come obviously they're coming out of the, the hibernation and they'll go down and they'll try to uh, feast on some of the uh, the calves you know it's a big calving moment you know for mm-hmm. not just moose but caribou and bison etc and so i've heard that they come down there and it's really easy for the bears to get them on the island so i wonder if that's you know one of the the factors but honestly i went down there and uh launched a jet boat actually one day i went down there but the wind was like really heavy and the water was pretty turbulent and i said you know what i'm looking at it like i'm not doing it i don't have a good feeling right now I'm not doing it. I'm not launching today. The next day we came down, the wind laid down a little bit, and then we went up, so we could have missed them. But apparently, that's a way to get them. Uh, I know your time, you know, the, the bears that are trying to get the, the buffalo, but you know, the bison. They bison? Same thing. Yeah. But buffalo are introduced, or buffalo, wild, bison are introduced. No. Are they just same? Because it's wood, woodland bison, and then you have the Plain no, bison. Scientific name bison. Bison. <laughs> bison. Okay. Bison. Okay. Really? Yes. Okay. Yeah, see, my knowledge of lower 48 hunting, like obviously, I know how to kill critters. I know how to get into the juice based on some maps and what I think is going to be good. Elk are, I don't want to talk about elk. Um, deer are pretty cool. But as far as Alaska goes, there's there's not much opportunity to hunt bison, as you know, so this is very special that you drew it. Mm -hmm. So if I don't have the opportunity to really hunt anything, I don't really get too heavily invested Mm -hmm. with the knowledge base. So now I'm going to, because I get to take a small part and I'm going to probably catch up after I had to go grab these beers. I'll probably catch up and get the first part of this conversation. But, um, when are you going? When is this happening? So I don't know what Derek's plans are, but I want to float it early to kind of get a feel of it. And um, so that'll kind of depend. I mean, if, you, if you're in, we kind of got to talk about those plans. But these bison were introduced to Alaska. Originally, they were transferred to the Delta area mm-hmm. up, yep. near, up near Fair, Fairbanks. That herd expanded so much that they said, we got to move some of these bison. So they took them down to the Copper River area, opened the back of the the uh, cattle gate, and they just w- left them. Nobody knew for years if they survived. I think they took like 17 bison to the Copper River area. Nobody knew if they survived. And then eventually... They started hearing different things of, oh, I seen a bison near the copper. I seen this. And then eventually the herd just expanded where they were able to open these hunts. 
So mm-hmm. if anybody hasn't listened to or read the book American Buffalo by Stephen Steve Ranella, it goes into depth of the whole thing. Because he drew it. Mm-hmm. This is the exact same hunt that he drew. And so check it out. I know that in uh, Delta, there's also a, uh, like a preserve, you know, where they do have bison. And I believe they, they run some, mayor quoting hunts out of there. Um, might be a three-sided deal. I'm not exactly sure, but I know that there's something down there. And there's several, like, you know, high fence operations. Where there's Buffalo. I mean, like every once in a while in the Matanuska Valley, I will not say where. Mm-hmm. But there is bison that you can kill because they get out of... Uh, fences that they're not supposed to be out of. Same with elk. Mm-hmm. Same with turkey. And you're like, I, why did I just see a long beard just cross the road? You're like, <laughs> what is going on and here? Pheasants. Yep, pheasants, right? <laughs> <laughs> so if they're not native, you could just blast them, right? Right. And what's cool about is uh, the, the conservation efforts of the buffalo coming back. I do know that Alaska used to have step bison, right? Which was just like mega, mega bison, like twice the size. Mm-hmm. And um, they went, I guess, extinct. Uh, I don't know when. And if I actually really cared about this draw tag, I may have done a little bit more prep mm-hmm. in the knowledge base. So, well, I've, <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, through that book and stuff, I've I've got a lot of it. You know, those uh, those bison that came over during the ice age when they had the land bridge from Alaska to Russia, which really wasn't a bridge it was more of just a solid ice land mass which is now under the Bering Sea but for and it didn't just go away it just didn't disappear over thousands of years this land mass eventually sunk into the ocean so animals back then wouldn't have known that they lived on a land bridge and then we're also I mean we're talking how much time? Is this 20,000 years? Is 40,000 years? This history lesson, I don't know where this can go, but basically, <laughs> I do know this. Uh-huh. On that side, the Kamchatka Peninsula, right, over there, they have sheep. They have moose. They've got uh, bison, I believe, mm-hmm. but they also have a few other things, and it's just similar to Alaska, brown bear, bears. right? Yeah. Bears. They have tigers, which is cool. Um, I don't want to dive too deep into that because I don't know it, but what I do think is cool is I need, do you have a copy of that book, Renella's book? Mm-hmm. I want that after you guys get done. Do it. Hook me up. So I'll Hook give you the uh, code for it. And I'll get learned up, and then we're going to revisit. Obviously, this is going to be a learning process. We're going to revisit it. But um, where are we going with this? We're going back to, we're going back to these, bu- these bison that were introduced. Okay. We had a hunt where muskox left the state of Alaska. They were gone, predated on, right? Mm-hmm gone not in the state anymore and the hunt that we did on this on a draw tag which i would like to talk about a little bit because eric hershey drew the muskox tia shoemaker drew the muskox and ryan kaufman drew the muskox this year you know i knew like four people that drew it and then casey dinkle drew it like uh, several people have even hunted before all of a sudden drew dx003 which we did which was really cool and um i've only drawn i haven't the coolest tag that I've ever drawn was the muskox tag. Muskox were gone, and in 1924, they took a herd from Greenland and introduced them out there on Nunavak Island, and they were kind of like the seed corn for the rest of the state. So, sounds like bison kind of have the, a very similar thing. I took us on a deep, I took us on a deep rabbit hole by mentioning step bison. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, we're going to forget about the step bison and go back to the muskox. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be here next week. <laughs> we will yeah. expand on further episodes on yeah. the history of the bison. We'll, we should we'll make this a thing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you're down in Cordova full time essentially and you're just here for a course right i am here for a course we're not going to jump down that hole too let's stick on this muskox yeah yeah we should do that. <laughs> i got some so, really funny comments to make about the muskox so, i'm just <laughs> waiting for my time have we, have we, have austin we and i had there? a really good time sorry oh, go ahead. have we properly introduced derek here yeah we just kind of dove in yeah this uh, is i think my name was said yeah, yeah so so derek kind of tell us just a little tidbit about you, how long have you lived here? If you're born and raised here, kind of just your a little tidbit of your story, and then we'll dive into. Story. And this is AK Derek for all you know. This is the AK Derek on the Pimpstagram. So, if you want to really get to the bottom of the juice, that's where you got to start. Mm-hmm. And he's also known as Thor. I mean, he is kind of a he's an OG man. I, I see that you're you're 
trying to grow out some locks like this guy, yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see. Was he your inspiration? Well, I've looked up to Derek um, <laughs> over the, uh, over a course of a hunting lifetime. We've been friends for a very long time, but like we kind of went, we were just doing our thing in the industry, and Derek has had an incredible um, hunting, I mean, call it a career, but a, a, just a an incredible story in the hunting community. So... Mm-hmm. At any rate, before I try to steal any more thunder, this is Derek Blake. <laughs> well, uh, I was born in Alaska. I'm a fifth generation Alaskan, uh, fifth generation commercial fisherman in Alaska, and uh, a hunter from a family of hunters, uh, mostly subsistence hunting from the town of Cordova. So that's my story here. My great grandma came here and uh, married. A native man um, that was from here, and uh, so that would have been your great, great, great. yeah. Well, he would be great, um, mm-hmm. yeah. So, and then his family goes back way before mm-hmm. that, obviously. Um, so, I am a commercial fisherman. I fish uh, Prince William Sound, Copper River. Uh, I salmon sane, and I'm also a hunting guide, uh, which kind of started as kind of helping buddies out that were guides and I kind of have a maybe about a 12 year history in the hunting guiding part, but it's always been side stuff and for cash and kind of just getting into the industry. But uh, what got me introduced to Austin and really got me into the hunting community was uh, working at Barney's Sports Chalet in the wintertime because uh, I could not afford good gear. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like 22 years old and 23 years old and, and I uh, went to work there and, uh, Bob Hodson, uh, who is, is passed away now, but, uh, he got to know me in the first year I worked there and was like, you should come down to these hunting shows and come sell gear with me. And I was like, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I got to know Austin right away and a bunch of other people and got to meet people. Uh, sick of gear was just going at that time i got the connection in with them super early um stone glacier did not exist all these other companies did not exist at that time instagram did not exist none of these things existed and uh family was being built uh just as it has been at those shows for way before my time oh yeah relationships are everything yeah and so right away like just got introduced uh, through a mutual client to an awesome sheep guide and uh, taxidermist that were about my age, and we became best friends. I introduced them to one of my best friends, Cole Kramer, and we all became best friends. And you know, the seeds were planted, everything grew, um, and here we are today in the industry where you know we have a lot of connections and you know, a lot of opportunities. Uh, I've had tons of hunting opportunities brought to me from that, that I would have never had on my own. Mm -hmm. Um, so without getting too boring, uh, on that whole thing, but like, I've just been super blessed with the connections that I've been handed. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it, I mean, it's all earned as well. And like what you bring to the table and who you are and like a lot of it is, um, how do you, how am I going to, how do I get along with this person, you know? And also in these very intense moments when you're, when you're staring down the barrel at a, you know, a 10 foot brown bear that your client's (laughs) trying to take with a bow and you're like, okay, I need to make the right decision. All this needs to happen. And you know, you and Cole got each other's back, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, that, that trust there is not something that you can just be like, Oh, at a trade show, this is great. But (laughs) over the, you know, over the years when you get in the field and you get into it. Yeah. Those friendships have also been connections and have also been those experiences in the field and trust and everything has been built. And, and it's been a long time, just like I have with you, Austin, that we've, you know, now hunted together, we've traveled together and, uh, you know, I mean, we not, might not see each other often, but when we do, it's always it's good. good. Absolutely. And that, um, spending that time on the double bunk bed. Yeah. I got top <laughs> bunk. <laughs> with, with Ruby there. I know you keep talking about the muskox hunt we shared. And it's like, of course I did share. It was definitely on my hunt, but, uh, it wasn't even my, uh, my hunt. I was there for the, uh, the support of you guys. It was, uh, Ruby, my girlfriend in Austin that drew the tags and you guys, uh, um, yeah, pretty cool experience. I'm glad I was a part of it. I'm uh, I'm editing it now, and then taxes came up. I'm like, oh yeah, I better do those. I'm like, I'm I'm terrible. I'm more sending me at productivity, uh, but 
I've been hanging out with you a lot more than you know because I go through and I've got <laughs> <laughs> three hours of this footage between all the cell phones, between all the camera work. I'm like, I don't even know where to begin. So I've been piecing it together and putting it in. I'm like, all right, let me watch this three and a half hour masterpiece. You know, when I have time between fathering and normal day job stuff, and so I've 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 relived that adventure we, probably like tenfold. We could spend hours talking <clears throat> about that. Like I can think of so many different parts of that hunt <laughs> that are worth talking about. <laughs> what, was the, what was the number one thing that, that you think back? <clears throat> other than getting pelted in the face by ping pong size rocks. So I had right? forgotten about that until <laughs> I can't remember. You posted it and then Ruby posted it like it was hilarious. But uh, for, I still have my teeth. I still all, have all my yeah, teeth. For all you guys, so I had told Ruby and Austin because I had been out there. I, I drew the tag some years before this and, and did it myself. And I was like, you know, when you land, there's nothing there. It's real. like, And it's weather. It's cold. And have anything you need to cover your flesh there because you're riding on a snow machine back to the little village, which I shouldn't even call a village. It's like the little group of houses or not, not even houses, kids, right? The Ca- little huts, cabins. Or whatever cabins. And uh, Austin and I end up having to ride in a sled <laughs> and <laughs> riding in this sled and just golf ball sized chunks of ice being pelted at our faces <laughs> while we're laughing and Ruby's filming us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm filming. This is sweet. We're here. And all of a sudden, we just hit the ice track, you know, <laughs> just take it into the face. Right, this is sweet. That's the new good <clears throat> Uber. <laughs> Oh yeah, the new tobacco Uber. Yeah, we yeah. showed up. He brought his ice sled for for you guys. Huh? Oh yeah, that's got to be a standard <laughs> thing because I'm like, where do I sit? Do I just jump on the gear. What do we do? You know, Derek and I are scissoring on the back of this trailer. <laughs> Ruby's you know flipped around, reverse cowgirl on the back of the snow machine, filming us. <laughs> just, like, just a huddled mass of gear, uh, bow boxes, you know, like bags, duffel bags, all just stacked. And I'm a spider monkey, monkeying, holding it on. <laughs> That so was, many funny stories on that trip. Oh my gosh. Um, friendship warms a heart. <laughs> friendship warms a heart. But it was cool. Uh, I mean, like the people were cool. You dive in um, to give you an idea when we got there. You, we rolled in, we come into camp, and somebody, one of the clients, just shot a monster bull. So they're unloading it. We help them unload it before we unload our gear. And, you know, we're. Are you getting out? There's this big logistic thing. It's it's all logistics, really. Are you getting out it's right now? Weather. Can you leave? <laughs> yep. It's all weather. I don't know. What are we doing? And then James, I call him James the Weatherman Whitman, you know. He's there, you know, calling the Belichick shots, you know, at the top <laughs> end. He's like, you go, you go, you stay. You know, he's on the cell phone. He's got two different cell phones, a burner, a GCI, an AT&T. Just, just call and plays. Oh, yeah. You know, we had a weather day right after we got in before we hunted our first day, right? And now um, – for everybody that knows here, Awesome Nellick, obviously he's killed everything solo, packed that out <laughs> on his back with his camp and the uh, photographer that wasn't there, he doesn't talk about, but he also packed him on his back too. And uh, so, you know, he's, he's a pretty tough guy. I mean, he played rugby. He's, Thank he's, you. Thank he's, you. He's, he's capable. I'm blushing. And, and so we uh, we have a weather <laughs> yes. day and then we go to go hunt and Austin and I are, are the same. We're like kill mode. We're like we can do it. Weather doesn't matter. It, I mean, we're good to go. And Ruby's just like, well, if Derek's going to do it, I can do it. Like, it's fine. Um, for the most part, she might complain, but I'll tell her to not complain. <laughs> <laughs> she's a trooper. She, she troops. She yeah, she's through. a trooper. And we take off on our first hunting day. And uh, our Raymond Amos, who famous. We, we, uh, we love famous Raymond Amos. The most C, the coolest yep. guy in the village. And he's like doing the whole like, tour thing around and we're not having good visibility he's like stopping he's like the weather's coming this way we must watch and we must wait and look oh i found a hut and i'm like we want to go hunting like, <laughs> yeah. like, like we, you guys are just we, eager the, weather, to the, get out. the forecast the next two days is crap we know it's not gonna happen we're just like we got two tags we only got so much time austin's got like a family like we need to do this and so we're getting a little frustrated and we're going and then Austin very selflessly as he is a very selfless hunter. He's like, okay, man, it's not looking good. Bees be like, you know, Ruby's a girl, like man, first experience, first hunt opportunity is hers. 
And uh, I'm like, Ruby, wow. okay with that? And she's like, I don't know. What What do you think? And I'm like, you know, whatever. But I was like, well, if he's if he's good with it, that's fine. We can try. And uh, and she had to get back. She had school. Yeah, she had some school work and some other things. We don't have service out there. No Wi-Fi. And, uh, you know, we figured we could send Ruby back and Austin and I can stay because I don't have anything else I got to do. And uh, But no matter what, we're not leaving until this is done. But the caveat was, Ruby, you get to go back and you get Wi-Fi, but you're also on mommy daycare so you got to come back oh, and take care right. of the daddy daycare the for me that's so right. i'm like a couple more days out in the cold was, that was stipulation. <laughs> and then top bunk moves to bottom bunk <laughs> yep <laughs> <laughs> and uh so we have this crappy day it's windy like the raymond's called it for a little while we're sitting in this hut for like an hour i'm like this is this is crap we need to be hunting and we finally go out we ride like i can't remember like all day long on some machines we see we went cow. From, we went from one side to, to the, the other, other side of the island all saw, the way 60 was it miles two muskarks we saw in the first group or one there one was two, two but and it was, there was there another cows. group of hunter yeah. that was on that one yeah. and it was a cow and a bull yeah okay so we left that we kept moving and we finally find muskox at the end and it's blowing it's crappy and uh, we couldn't see and then it like it cleared up yeah kind got of, a little bit still better glowing. but we've been bouncing around the snow machines it's a long day and then we get after to go make this have a snow machine that breaks down oh yeah we had a snow machine blow up we had to yep. leave it so we're right in the double <laughs> like double everything up. oh yeah we've it's got just a, like the full day i'm on a uh, grand touring I'm on a grand touring that uh the oil it, it's it's now a m- oil mix where he's mixing it in you know ray amos which you have to transport it for because it's like all of these freaking uh snow machines they've got personalities to get them to go and he knows their personalities that's why you have a transporter and they control the the rigs in the village so all of a sudden we're back to the snow machine kama sutra it's like all right jump on jump on like oh okay he changes you know he changes the the sled he comes over to mine i'm like i'm now i'm on the now i'm on ruby's grand touring with my knees to my freaking (laughs) earlobes going like this for another 30 (laughs) miles you know so yeah we 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 covered an incredible amount of ground we saw some other people that were on them on some musk ox and then like we're kind of like I don't know if this is going to happen. Mm-hmm. Closing in on the end of the day, yep. we stopped to fuel snow machines up because we've, you know, we've gone through several tanks of gas. We're going to stop yep. and fill up. And then um, basically it's windy. It's blowing tough. And I'm like, good luck candy bar. I remember pulling out a candy bar. We're like, we haven't eaten anything all day. Yeah, all day. It's just a chore to get your food even out and get your, can- your gloves off and, we want chill. some, yeah. We, yep. Okay, my hands are cold. You're chewing on frozen chocolate. You know, like it's all just froze. How how cold was it? Um, you know, the ambient temp I don't think was too bad, but with wind chill is definitely down there, way below zero. Mm-hmm. But I'd say ambient was probably that day, maybe in the twenties. It wasn't. It wasn't crazy. But it was. It was weird. The. I like the vertigo because it's like flat. Oh yeah, because you country. lose you lose the horizon. You got white out. You know, and then and you're just you see bouncing f- around like a fox in the in the distance. You're like muskox. It's moving. Like, muskox don't move that quick. You can't tell the size. Like so, everything's kind of thrown off. Yeah, but we eventually slipped. I mean, we stopped. We were sitting there and we looked up. And I, I did you spot it? Or did Ruby spot it? Someone was like, "Hey, is there something up there on the on the ridge?" And we're like, "Oh, we'll give Ruby the credit. She's not here." Yeah, yeah Ruby, yeah. Great Ruby, hunter, Ruby. <laughs> Use, yeah, Ruby dialed it in. Was like, "I think there's something up there, guys." It, and Ruby, uh, to throw a little pre note to this, she uh, I put her in for the draws. Um, she did not want to draw a musk. Or she didn't want to go in for muskox. Muskox scared her, uh, and I was like, "You're not going to draw it. It'll be okay." So I put her in, and of course, she drew it. <laughs> First year, right? First year. So oh we see these muskox, and we take off after them. And there's one good bull in the group, and we had already talked beforehand that um, the person who's not shooting, which i.e., this was going to be Austin in this scenario, it was going to go in on the bowl and have it face off with him. And then the hunter, which I, is Ruby would come in on the side and get the broadside shot. And we're, you know, she's using a bow. And basically how this works is you see a musk ox, they move off. You don't, you don't pursue them. They move off and then you'll reposition, try to find them again. And if you have two snow machines, you get a very wide berth from them. And you don't want them obviously fleeing, but you get a very wide berth from there where you can see them and you'll park one at 12 o'clock, one at six o'clock. And then the two parties will go to three o'clock and nine o'clock and just start and then walk closer. in. So they yep. think it's a wolf pack and then they just, they're they just not moving. There. And then they just stand, they there. hold their ground. 
And so Austin is doing a great job. He's right in there, right close. It's right on him. And Ruby has never bow hunted before. And uh, she shot I, that bow though. She, yep. We, uh, we got bows um, and she, she, she shot hers a decent amount and <laughs> she was practiced, you know, to 20 yards and, uh, everything was ethical and good about it. But, um, I definitely forced her to do this, um, <laughs> because I had done it before and I was like, it's the easiest thing ever. You walk up, it's a garage door. You shoot your target on the garage door and it dies. It's that easy. It's a musk ox. <laughs> yep. mean, so we walk up to it in about 30 yards. She's like, like, isn't that, that close enough? I'm like, not for you, babe. <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> so we get a little closer. I'm 20 screaming, yards. get closer. <laughs> And at it 20 yards, she me. doesn't want to, she doesn't want to get closer. And I'm like, we're getting closer. We go to like 15 yards and Austin's like five yards. And it's so like, like you're filming. thinking about this back. Now that I look back at it, like Austin actually risked his life a lot more than he realized because we're so close that I'm like, okay, there's no way you can mess this up. This is going to be the easiest thing ever. And I'm just really calm. Okay, Ruby, here's your arrow. She's getting all set up. I'm holding her gloves. I'm holding my gloves. And I'm like, just pull back, find your anchor point, relax, find that spot, you know, about a third of the way from the bottom of the chest up behind the shoulder and just squeeze it off. And the wind is right behind us. Everything's perfect. It's, it's so blowing perfect. About 40. And it's blowing 40. Yeah. So it's, it's <laughs> so he's saying it calmly, but it's kind of a yell calm. Yeah. Yeah. I so it's see. happening. And so she's ready. She draws, she takes her time. Everything looks really good. And she flings an arrow that sails so far <laughs> to the side that I'm like, and it goes to the right and Austin's to the left. If it would have gone to the left, Austin was dead. Uh, <laughs> 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 this thing just oh sails on us. I saw and it slow motion like a 40 out of a 48 pound bow or something like that it was just <laughs> slow motion fmj coming in the sun the sun hit the broadhead <laughs> it twinkles i'm like oh that was could have been death yeah and oh. it's like it misses she not only misses <laughs> oh muskox but God. misses it by like a muskox length and i'm like and in my mind i'm thinking i have no idea how that happened but i was like hey babe it's okay <laughs> so yeah oh she was so <laughs> she was so pissed and so mad. i was like babe no it's fine it's fine and she's like wanting to throw her throw her bow down and i'm like He's grabbing the next the arrow like babe it's okay just relax and here's your next arrow we're looking to get this all set up calm <laughs> and, oh, and, and here's Meanwhile, the other thing I, I brought five arrows because I'm like why would you ever need more than one this is the easiest hunt in the world <laughs> so I, here's arrow number two so I get that set up and I'm like babe it's all good just relax just pull back and fine. so we get ready and, and literally like super super close probably 12 yards now here we go again. In she between pulls. two charges where like, I get charged. Well, I'm running. Yeah, he's, Austin's getting Juking it. this And we haven't been charged out. yet, but Austin's just like working this thing. I mean, he's having the time of his life. I mean, he should have literally yeah, have, been, clown, have huh? been paying us for this experience that he's <laughs> getting. Awesome. <laughs> and, he's clown. and he's filming and he's running around. And so the second arrow, the exact same thing really? happened. She sails this arrow. And the muskox looks at us, it turns, it starts running. Ruby throws her bow, she takes off. I'm trying to grab her bow, I'm grabbing arrows, I'm grabbing gloves, I'm grabbing everything. Everybody's like, Austin's running by, Just and things are happening, and they're like, and they're like all like, it's charging, it's charging. I'm like, oh, muskox, whatever, I don't care. I look up, this thing is three feet from me at a dead charge. I have to dive out of the way with all this stuff. Luckily, I don't impale myself with one of the only three arrows, arrows that are left. And Austin takes off and as he runs by he yells use your peep don't forget your don't peep don't forget your peep so he <laughs> runs by he runs the past the muskox he <laughs> stops it it starts dancing with this thing again like I said he's getting the, the whole show it's so so <laughs> exciting and Ruby's like get the gun shoot it just shoot it Derek you just shoot it I'm like I'm not gonna shoot, shoot your, your muskox, muskox. No. you're gonna shoot you give me the gun give me the gun I'm like Ruby no so we walk up into the wind <laughs> here in now, the, the wind's now, blowing now, the, now we're, we're facing the wind Muskox. And like, he's she's just doing it. And we're walking up and she's like 30 yards. She's like, I'm not getting any closer. And I'm like, Ruby, come on. This thing was three feet from me. It doesn't matter. And she is throwing a fit. I finally get her in. We're getting really close. Get set up for the third arrow. She's calmed down. I'm like, babe, come on, just relax. And she's like, I need to use my peep. I'm like, okay, I, yeah, you should probably do that. Yeah. <laughs> and, Remember the peep. <laughs> yeah. She draws so back. Mean. 
And she gets all settled, and as she's getting ready to release, of one of those big wind gusts catches her arm, and she sails one like thirty yards above this thing. Just you see it's it in the gone, sun. Just and gone. she's like, "Just give me the gun." The abyss, and I'm like, "You got huh? two more arrows." You got two more arrows. <laughs> <laughs> and so I hand her the next one, and she's like, "I can't pull my bow." And I'm like, "Babe, just relax, just breathe." And She's like, I can, I can, I'm too worked up. And I was like, yeah, you can. I was like, I'll help you steady. So I help pull her and kind of steady her. I'm like, okay, now I'm going to let go. And she's drawn and fourth one is like, just relax, aim and squeeze. She drills it and everything looks just good. And we got one arrow left. And yeah, and I was like, let's do it again. I was like, right where you see her fletching. I was like, aim two inches lower. Boom, two inches lower. The thing lays down and is dead in seconds. I mean, it was just like that and done. She was and just worked up. So worked up. Yeah. I mean, but <laughs> I can't blame her. No, that was, <laughs> I can't either. I'm like, yeah, I come up. But I'm, I'm like, I got to tone this down because she just missed. I think she's worked up. I get up and she's like, I'm, there, there I'm was happy. Some crying and we all, like, we all like, there was a lot huddle. of stuff going on. We all kind of like, we sit there. She's like, I'm. You know, she's she's taken back as her first bow kill. It was it was it was, it was pretty intense, yeah. and um, she almost got. They both almost got laid out. I got l- almost laid out. I don't I don't know how many times, but it was just that's what they do. They turn to fight their ground um, or stand their ground. It was just a big moment, and it was cool. And then all of a sudden, it was like, oh man, it's going to be dark in about twenty minutes. So yeah. like, well, go to work. <laughs> we better go to work. Yeah, pretty and then much. the slice and dice. Uh, Champs of Alaska. I'm, well, I'll, I won't say Alaska. I will say Nunavak mm-hmm. because once we were done, Ray Amos said that was the fastest self guided muskox breakdown I have ever seen. And then, wow. and then, impressive. It was sweet. It, it was wasted no time. No, we didn't. I mean, we came out. We it didn't was, have a it was a full night, day. We were ready to be done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were like, let's get this done. Yeah. Just, I just Slice watch out for up. this, you know, and full even, like, skin or just gut or gut and throw. Oh, no. Everything. Everything. Full skin, everything. Breakdown, full, full skin, breakdown. full breakdown. Leave no waste. I mean, took the whole thing. Oh, 100%. Did you guys keep the and the, on that? Yeah. And the liver, we uh, there's pretty cool uh, ADF and G study. They send you with this kit because they want samples. Because believe it or not, they're uh, now just now establishing a baseline for the muskox that have been up here for ni- since 1924. So they brought up a, a biologist to the state of Alaska. Um, I don't, I believe they're in Kotzebue now. Uh, but at, yeah, long story short, that's where she's at. So we even took samples, sliced and diced this thing, and then we got back. You know, like just threw it in. We tucked it. You 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 lay the muskox all out in in a tarp, right? Um, spread, flesh up, spread eagle. and then you and then you throw all the meat inside so that it doesn't get that shortening effect. So you get like you know meat loss. So the the hide yeah, and then the keep hide it. insulates it to get back. <clears throat> And that was pretty cool. You know, we saw that when we first came up, we saw the mm-hmm. first bull. I'm like, whoa, what are they doing? And then we did all that and then we get back. So that was, that was pretty sweet after a full day of riding, sitting, you know, freaking knees to earlobes. And <laughs> it was a big day. It was a huge day. And then we're like, oh, wow. And we get back, we slice and dice and, um, we get, yeah, we, we bring all the meat inside and, yeah. And, and then, two weather days after that. Yeah, we had two weather days, and I actually got grief because there's, uh, for anybody who's listening to this podcast who goes to New York Island, I believe a lot of people have mentioned this before on several of the podcasts. I've talked about this. Um, I didn't go into that deep uh, about Ruby's harvest and forgetting the peep. I was like, oh, yeah, she nailed this. But, yeah, I was done. It was great. Just a pro. You know, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> Five arrows <Yeah>. later. <laughs> what happened to the quiver? I don't know. The wind must have took him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, I've got to edit a certain way. <laughs> Leave it all in. But uh, I got... I. I was playing uh, like in in the village. Usually every night they have uh, open open volleyball, so you go and you play. And I missed uh, one night from slicing and dicing the the muskox, and uh, I went the following night because we had a weather day. And um, one of the gals there uh, said, "You get your muskox, you know, come last night." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, um, Ruby did." She says, "You'll get yours tomorrow." You know, and it was really just cool. So she just put her little elder touch on you. She did. She did. And she taught me a little bit about the um, the whole process, the uh, the people there, how it all works, and then also some of the language, which was really cool. 
Um, oh, she went know, to like teach you the language. Yeah, just a little bit, you know, just a little bit. And I thought that was really cool. And I did you confirm? Did you confirm the words with another source, or did like when you said the words, did they glare at you? Well, it was in yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Like in like in school when they only teach you the bad words. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't know, but it was. I don't think she would throw me under the bus like that. But uh, I don't know. It was it was just so interesting to go out there. Oh yeah, okay. So it's Chupik, um, and it, it's pretty cool. Uh, she said, uh, "Hello, it's Chamai." I believe. I'm I'm sorry if you're listening to sweetie. Um, Biogi, Bioga. Uh, Biochi is like goodbye to you, goodbye to a couple people, goodbye to everybody, you know, mm-hmm. depending on the situation. And then um, Binik is uh, Binik, Yupik, Chupik. Binik is uh, doing doing okay. Mm-hmm. And one is we're strong, we're good. And then uh, Ong Kong means yes, no. Ong Kong. Yes, no. So Ong, Ong is yes, and I Kong believe is Ong is yes, and Kong means no. So, mm-hmm. at any rate, we we sat like in this. Uh, so the the cabin that we stayed in is basically a kitchen and a living room together, a communal bathroom, and two bedrooms. And this is this house is a family. So the the cook actually it was a cook's home, James's home, and they would stay. The, James would stay in one bedroom. And then Derek, Ruby, and I stayed on a bunk bed in the other bedroom. We were in the kids' room. And then the kids, when the clients were there, actually slept out on the floor on like a crash pad. And then the cook, the father, he was sleeping on the couch. And then other people came. And it was like, there's beds everywhere. There's bodies everywhere. People are like, yep, just get warm. But it was, it was warm and cozy and comfortable. And the food was great. I'm still trying to perfect my muskox. And I'm almost done with it. Let's do Oh my gosh, it was so good. Muskox is so good. Which, uh, it's really funny because when I did my hunt the first time, I had a very bad experience with the muskox. My first meal was muskox stew, which I stuck my spoon in, pulled it up, and there's 12 inches of clumped hair hanging off of it, oh. and I didn't eat my first, first hunt there. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> I understand it. I, I get it. I mean, yeah. it's also like I've had, um, uh, like, seal, you know, like, yeah. melted, like, seal oil, and that was the same thing where, like, some people who smell it smells like, like olive oil and, like, domesticated fish food mixed together is the only thing. And, I mean... How do I know what domesticated fish food smells like? Ooh, you know. But <laughs> at any rate, that's what it smells like. So, like getting it down the hatches and the consistency is different, especially when you have like a hair that goes down your throat. You're like, yeah, mm. and it's like you can feel it, like it's nearly made it all the way through to go out your system, and it's still hanging out your mouth. <laughs> and that's you pull how long it out. is. Oh yeah, and then, yeah. So, did we mention uh, over your your mental state over those couple days? Oh no, we haven't even began. Okay, all right. Oh, it was um. So basically, so this it, it got very you know precarious because at first it was like, oh, we're going to be great. We've got plenty of time. Then we had a weather day, and then we go out, we kill rubies, and then it's like bearing sea storm nobody's yep. moving bad and we're like oh no two days so we sat there for two days and then i'm like and then oh, more man. hunters are coming in more hunters are coming in and you only have so much time I'm like oh perfect i draw the juicy tag great and now i'm not even gonna have another chance to go out and hunt it you so you you went dark on me i was dark there for a you little went while dark. it's done man this is done my kid my I took all this time away from my wife my life like and now i don't even get to do it you know i don't know how my wife's gonna feel i meanwhile this is day two mm-hmm. every single <laughs> hunt <laughs> of a seven day hunt <laughs> He's I'm not so he's already stressed. Now. He was so stressed. <laughs> just stressed. We're there, like, and then and the weather was just so bad. You just see, like, bad. it was just storm after storm after storm. It didn't look good. Just, and then hitting, you like look out, and you just see a dog curled up outside, laying in it, just covered up with snow, standing up, shaking off. I'm like, oh god, this is this is bad. This this is bad. I went dark for a little while. I'm like, it's not gonna happen. I'm freaked out. So does every single hunter that has the hunt, do they do like the same stay with James or go out with Ray? Is it like the same? There's transporters and everybody is either a transporter or a guide. 
you know, there's a few of them there. And, <laughs> and I'm also going to mention this tag. Uh, it's a hundred percent success rate, which I had to remind yeah, Austin. Austin. <laughs> it was hundred <laughs> percent success rate. <laughs> it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. But then, well, well there was a little bit of want to be the one percent. <laughs> the yeah, one want to be the one ever like, in <laughs> history. <laughs> history. I'm, this, it crossed my mind. I'm like, great. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm that guy. I'm well, that I even, guy. I even got back. People are like, oh, you got one too. And I was like, yeah. You see, those was like two muskots. Like, oh, I couldn't tell. It was, you know, I thought it Ruby shot it. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, I got one. Okay. So, so anyway, you, you were doubting it. So I was doubting yeah, it. We had hard. a couple days. We kept spirits up. Ruby can, you know, both Ruby and I were like, Austin, we're staying. Like, we're going to do this unless Ruby had to go back, which we couldn't get back because it was no plan. And then he said, well, even if you, if you're gone, like I, I have other hunters coming in. It's their time. Yeah. This is your contract at the end. I'm like, well, can I pay a little extra? Can I rent another snow machine? Is there anything? Like, it's not like that. We have all the snow machines in the village yeah. dedicated or to this. these tasks. Like you're yeah. not going to be able to get one. I don't know what to tell you. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to say James probably didn't use the best words. I think he was, he was working me. He got a good, he got a good deal out of the end of it though. Yeah. So, yeah. well, like, do you, so got, the, do you guys want to go in? And this could be like a little mark. We could talk about it after the story. Kind of go in how you set up contacting James. He's, they're on the oh, website. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, okay. they're on the website. There's there's four or five um contract um go, co- contract go, go into the story first before we get off on of the his story. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So yeah. what happened before I actually went out and it was like and then it, and then all of a sudden it happened and then it was all hands on deck. We're getting out of here. We're getting off this rock immediately. So the very last oh, day. Yeah. Literally the last day in the contract of hunting. Yep. It was the next hunters are coming in the next day, and it was like this is. And the we last already day. had ones come in the night before too that we yep. got to meet. Yep, two other group. Yeah, they yep. all. Other hunters came in where they're like, "There's definitely no snow machines available." They got in on the plane in between the storms. And I'm sitting. I'm like, I don't think it's going to happen, man. And we're talking, and James, oh, it's not good. The weather's not good. I, you know, I don't want to tell you. Sorry. And um, like, all right, well, I'm going to bed. And I'm like, well, I guess we're going to fly out in a couple of days because tomorrow's the last hunting day and it's supposed to be, you know, nasty storms. He's not, <laughs> the outlook is very bleak. And we've been sitting in this yeah, small a week cabin in this together. Small place. Yes, very tight quarters. Yeah, cabin fever. You see, this didn't bother Ruby and I at all because we're used to living on my boat. It didn't bother me us, either. So, like, but it was. Well, no, I mean, it just. It was like I'm not going to get. It's not going to happen. I'm not. We had our success. We were. We had our thing. But obviously, we were there for Austin. But like Austin's still in that. Is it going to happen? You always have that thing when it's you. So we, I can make fun of Austin for this <laughs> because, because looking on the outside, you're like, dude, it's going to be fine. But yeah. like in your mind, it's not fine. It's, it's not fine. It's not fine. Well, it's the last day. It's literally it was the, the last, last day. day. And like I'm waking up every morning early and looking out the window, going out, untangling the dogs, getting back in their their little shacks. You know, I'm like trying to keep busy, going to the Wash Terry, you're doing all this stuff, and it's just a whiteout. You can, you only see a hundred yards in one way. You can barely see the cabins next to you. You know, going playing volleyball. And the very last morning, I come out, and um, I'm like, "Well, James, what do you what do you think, Ben? What's the weather? What's happening?" And he's like, "I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. He Doesn't was, look he was great." Stumped, James, the, the weather weatherman man Whitman was stumped, and so. Uh, we're sitting there. We're having our morning coffee. Nobody else is up yet. I'm drinking and I made these custom with Gus Carr, right? He he made these custom muskox shirts, so I'm wearing this muskox shirt. We're drinking coffee, you know. Barely see outside, doesn't look good. Just you see the light and the what the, the light is white. It's it's not what it should look like through the window. And James says, I like your shirt. So I want a shirt like that. I was like, Well, I gave you it. I, I brought shirts for everybody. He says, No, I want J and J outfitters. Noon of Ak, Alaska, registered guide, James Whitman, while well, he's pointing to my chest pocket, mm-hmm. muskox on the back, J&J Outfitters, Noon of Ak, Alaska, muskox. It's like, James, if I get an opportunity to, to shoot a muskox, I'll, 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 I will make you that sweatshirt and I will bring it to you wherever you want. I'll ship it out. I'll do whatever you want. Takes a sip of his coffee. Thinks about for a second, sets it down. You go today. <laughs> we go, go, we got to go today. He's like, yes, get ready. I go in. I'm like, yeah, we're going. Let's go, everybody. Let's go. We're going today. It's happening. He's just like, I'm excited. He's just like, you know, 
I'm doing the crab pinchers. I'm running around like, let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm like, it's going to be all right. I'm like, we're going, we're going. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, over the top, but Ruby and I, of course, we're excited too. So we're ready immediately. And then it's like waiting for them to get ready, which they know already what the days are going to be like. And, uh, they're not stressed. They're not worried. They're not rushed at all. And we're getting out there and we're like, Hey, it's, it kind of looks like it's clearing. Hey, it's not that cold. There's no wind. What's going on here? It's so, beautiful. Yeah. Like it's starting to clear. We're filling up the snow machines. Like we got to go. Then the other clients that flew in the night before. They're like, getting ready are, to go. They're, they're taking off. Gone. They left. They leave before we even get going. We're like, what the heck? Oh, come on. Guys. And we're like, That's you know, stressful. and this is James is like, J and J. Nudavac Island. <laughs> James Whitman registered guy. James registered I guy. want that. I want James <laughs> Austin's like, whatever you want. Whatever you want, please. <laughs> he is Let's basically I'll send James is writing down every one of these demands. You. He's like, okay, all right. You can go. <laughs> now he's st- you go. Now he struck the deal. Yeah. You made the deal. You made so we go out. We finally fill up the snow machine. We finally get out. I'm on the grand touring, knees to elbow, or you know, knees to earlobe, and I'm I'm like, oh yeah. Shit, yes, it's happening. I'm sky high. I'm exuberant. Austin, I'm like, oh yeah, nothing can't stop me now. And then we go, we go back to the hut, we sit there, and he's like, he looks back at us, we keep going. And I'm like, there's two muskox right there. And he looks, and then their job is they, they can't show you, they can't do anything as a transporter, they can't show you the animals, they can drive you around the island for your safety, get the snow machine started. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, let's go. So we go down, we see them. I'm like, yep. Like Derek and I look at each other. Oh Mature yeah. Bowl. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in each other's minds. So we we without even having to say anything, we already know what's up. And uh, let me see. Ruby was with you actually because there was a problem with the snow machine. So we swapped. I gave Ruby with you to film or do something, and I went. Oh, that's right. She was going to be with you, and I was going to go long and do what you did. So I go way out and around. He's coming in. These mus- muskoxers are just hanging out. And we stop at our opposite ends. Take it from here. Yep. And we just, we did the 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock, walk in on them. Not Perfect. before you set up a camera. Yeah, well, yes. Hand I, another one to Ruby. Yeah. Another one on your bow. Go pr- I had another all one on your head. Of cameras and the muskox, you look at <laughs> them like, come on, dude, what are you doing? Get out of here, you know? Because we, we had enough time where we saw them, like, well, we're going to be able to track them. It's game over. It's a bluebird day. Yeah, it was, it was like 35 degrees, no wind. Granted, my girlfriend just did the terrible <laughs> day in the wind that's <laughs> never shot an animal with a bow. And Austin, <laughs> the, the accomplished hunter, has 35 degrees, bluebird, yeah. beautiful weather. Weather, no wind. It's perfect. And I'm like, I'm going to walk a little bit close. Like, I feel bad. It's like, this is why you're here. You feel a little bit of remorse as, as hunters should. I mean, like it's, it's exhilarating to take any animal's life, especially with bow, but with musk ox, the whole experience is everything and killing the animal. It's a harvest. If you get it, it's out. a harvest, it's a harvest. So you just walk up to a them, which special is, harvest. Ex- it is it, why they went extinct or, you know, from Alaska and we the, had to bring in another their population. Their strategy of herding up, that does not work. Isn't effective when you have yeah no. weapons, projectiles, and no. <laughs> or wolves for that matter. They just they they're gone. So at any rate, we walk. I walk up, wood arrow, big jimbo, walk up to the thing. I'm gonna get a little bit closer. You guys good? You know, there's two there's two muskox together standing side by side. I'm like, well, there it is. I don't know, 12, 15 yard shot. Pull back, zap them one time. Down. And then he was down, and the other one, like, this, it was a bull, a big bull, mature bull, and then, like, a three-year-old bull. And then Derek's like, oh, we're trying to walk to each other. And the little bull's like, I'm going to get a piece of your ass. <laughs> you know, I got a great film him. of this footage. Yeah, <laughs> the thing off. charged me. Came at him, and he's like, all right, see you guys. I didn't like that guy anyway. They took off running. We're like, okay. Awesome okay. kills. You I mean, your bull was epic. It's super ancient, old, awesome bull. Yeah, and uh, Ruby's was, Beautiful. it wasn't as old, but it was beefy Big, because yeah. basically by your by four or five they're putting they put on everything and then yeah. they start to get smaller yeah. just based on their measurements because they yep. wear down their tips, and so it was awesome. We went up. It was like a somber moment where I'm like, oh, okay, you know, the effectiveness of a bow, like it just boom, it was done, done. And we're like, oh god. It's done. All this like pressure. I think it was like nine thirty in the morning when we we're standing at your muskox or something like that. Yeah, it was just boom, done. All done. of a sudden, and they were. It was in the middle of the island, a little bit closer, because normally Super at the close. end of the season, they everybody goes out in the snow machines and pushes them to the far end. 
away from all the the fuel mm-hmm. as far as the machine can <laughs> yeah. go. So you kind of know the rain. And so they came back and we're like, oh, he was hiding. And then and then we set another slice and dice champ record. Ray Amos, <laughs> yeah. Ray Amos says that is you guys beat your time yesterday. And we go back. We get back to the village. It's all slice and dice. We're doing the you know the high fives and hugs and this is awesome. And then we get back and then. Um, it was like, whoa, the weather looks pretty good. There's a plane coming in. All of a sudden, it was like, oh, yeah, there's a plane coming in. We've got other, the, the other clients are coming in. And then Derek and Ruby were like, hey, can we get on that plane? They're like, they call up. Yeah, you can get on the plane. They're like, okay. The mad scramble starts to go. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to be here for another couple days. You know, like, I don't know. We're thinking Austin, awesome. one more day, deal with this stuff. We're in a hell, but like, it All of a sudden, he's, he's like, like, I'm, I'm coming, coming too. too. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, do you have enough time? Like, we're, we're giving tips. We're hugging babies. We're, you know. We're giving, slicing meat. We're chopping. We're trying boning. to get these bags, like, set up for not being overweight. Yeah. And it's then just a mess. You're like, we're going to help you when we can. I'm sitting there. <laughs> you know, because I want to take it. I'm not trying to donate this musk ox. I mean, yeah. the musk ox hunts are about, you know, 45 100 to $5,500 all said and done just to get it back. That's not taxed or anything, but just to get it, go there, get it back, all your meat. Yep. Transporter. Um, a transporter guided is about six. You got to buy your locking tag. All, all these different. Oh yeah. Airfares. It's expensive. It's just expensive to go and do. And then, but that, that process got so accelerated so, so quickly that all of a sudden, yeah, we're packed. Then there's 15 minutes until we've got to load your guys stuff's all load. 15 minutes until we need to be at the airport and then the slice and chant air slice yeah yo oh, yeah yeah the airstrip airport <laughs> there's no airport <laughs> so no international airport we dude. crammed we i i i don't even know how i broke down everything that fast and then they jumped in grabbed the meat and then we all just started doing our totes where we were like we had a plan them, but until you set. start doing it it's, it's yeah that was fast yeah so we yeah uh, and then we got out of there all of a sudden we're sitting on the airplane like it's, oh my lord we're like we hi did james like we take a picture like we'll see you guys later and then yeah you know derek hooked um i uh we like our tips we give him some cash and then derek gave him like these brand new were they oakley's oh like, yeah top shelf oakley's badass Binocular. he gave him to ray Here, amos yeah. he says now i'm the most seest the most the most see cool the most cool and uh so he has those now I've i seen forgot about that pictures. yeah yeah i've seen some of his pictures where he's got oh, them right. on dude he's lit he, he's lit um so at any rate we got out of there we said goodbye and then we get to bethel they've got they have all their gear this doesn't end they've got all their gear it's all loaded everything's perfect he's done this and he's an expert at it they go through and i get through after them and like my musk ox is like three pounds over the hundred mark, pound mark and it's the hide and everything. I was like, I can't cut. There's no way that I can cut three pounds off of this thing. And she's like, I'm sorry. Alaska air cargo's closed. Um, Derek and Ruby are like, well, we're going to try to get on. And all of a sudden Bethel, I can't get on because the air cargo's closed. My bags are overweight from the meat. Mm-hmm. And, um, somebody comes out from the back and was like, Hey, here's my number. I, I get off in a minute. I call him up. He finally shows up minutes before the flight. I give him like a hundred bucks. I'm like, can you please take this and get it? He's like, I'll get it. Never met this man before in my life. Just the last, the Alaska way. Man. Yep. And he totally hooked up. So, are those dude, the ones? Those are the ones. He's the <laughs> most he is. We're looking at Instagram posts of Ray Amos. I think it's like McCoryuk24 on Instagram. Um, and so long story shorter, longer, however you want to get he took that. He shipped it to me. I got this trophy of a lifetime that I've spent an incredible amount of money, time, effort, and energy. I get on the <laughs> airplane. I get back. The muskox shows up. Boom. No problem. By the way, I was supposed to uh, get um, that muskox because I just got it. Fin- I just got it finished up tanning. I was supposed to get it tonight, but I came here instead. I'm like, I'll come back in another day to come get it. Um, that would have been so even fit. Got the whole high. Tan. Got the whole fi- oh. high tanned. Oh. So we uh, we got back. That all happened. My hide came, and then I made the sweatshirts for James. And I met James in Anchorage in his off season, and I gave him the sweatshirts. Um, and uh, he's like, "Hey, you come back. You come back for free now." So I got. Uh, I hold him to it. I called him this year and booked three other people. I was like, <laughs> yeah, "Hey, I booked coming. three other people. I'm coming." He's like, "Well, you got to pay for the snow machine." I was like, "Well, you, hey, you told me." I was coming back. We shook on it. 
This isn't written a contract. <laughs> you know, this so is like, man's words, bud. Yeah, yeah, this is man's <laughs> words, bud. Yeah. So at any rate, he's got those. I was like, I'll bring, I'll bring down jackets for you boys if I can come. And he's like, yeah, you booked me three other people and a fourth called. You come for free. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, That's I, the same thing. I know. I've sent so many people to James, and <laughs> uh-huh. he's such a good dude. He's so, like, real. 100%. Yeah. So, he's he's so good. Seg- segue into how, how does somebody do that? So, basically, the, the Alaska draws, you got to put in for the muskox, which you're, it's like, you put in. I put in for 12 years and drew for the first time in 12 years. I, I drew it the first time. Ruby drew it the first time. You drew your bison I drew the bison, first time. You know, I don't want to talk about time. it. Yeah. I mean, some of those big dags, you know, you just got to go for it full send. So, so the thing about Alaska, for those that are listening, is there's no point system. It's everybody has the same chance. You could put in for six per animal. Austin's strategy is to dump all six eggs in one basket absolutely mm-hmm. that's your best odds uh, i like to mix it up <laughs> he drew a turd so so it's so, what you want to do but i can't even anyways, make eye go, contact go, with go, you right now go back and do uh, so the longest i heard that anybody has put in for it was 24 years is what james said it took 24 years to draw that tag and now the number's a little bit better they say and so um some people have got it sooner than others as far as like the conservation beat. First uh, time. Yeah, first time. And so some people, uh, well, ADF&G is taking the, that herd, obviously, and they're repopulating certain parts of the state. So it just depends on the year. I mean, you could see the last year what the percentages were, but that's last year. Mm-hmm. This year, people are like, ooh, this one had 5% success rate for drawing. I'm going to put all into, I'm going to put it all into that. Uh, so like, the percentages change. change. Yeah. So change. the best strategy, and like, and Derek's told me this. He's he's. You applied for that one doll sheep tag. Mm-hmm. You got it. You put in for years, and you finally drew it right. Mm-hmm. Like you just stuck with it. If I put enough odds in, it's eventually going to draw. And I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, I'm just going to put all six in one basket, and depending on who I'm putting in with, I'll I'll do that. But I've drawn a couple of tags. I haven't drawn that many. So you got to take advice from the, from the guy who's uh, drawn a couple of tags or the guy who just drew the bison tag. Um, <laughs> so anyways, go back into how, how do you, uh, I, drew, I drew the bison tag. Now what? Oh, well the musk ox tag, right, then, sorry, and you start doing your research. But I mean, when I booked those, like when I called for Eric, Tia and Ryan, Literally <clears throat> that evening, which I talked to you the same day, where mm-hmm. I'm like, Hey, these are my it all happens right away immediately, and they fill up, and then you're like, I don't know, what, what do I do? And you like, gotta well, pick your dates, you gotta put money in, you gotta do it immediately. So, you call them up, you put a deposit, it secures your dates. To, dates is, is kind of like you want to go early when they're closer, maybe they get pushed around. That doesn't really matter, it's just kind of getting your date secured, and then you get bumped on down the line because James is the best. I heard at least Abe, gentleman, yep. he's, he's another great guy. And then, and then it they, goes down they the have line. A website? No, or how? Did, I don't have. I don't have a plug for James. It's all uh, word of mouth. Yeah. Nunavac, Nunavac, Alaska. J and J Outfitters. Nunavac, Alaska. <laughs> That's where you can find him. But really, if you want to get in touch, we can get you in touch with James. He's he's my man. So he, and I knew him through Derek. So I'm just like message us on Mission Alaska, right? Yeah, or you can um, AK Derek, and then. Don't talk or, to him about bison. Or the last cast. I know. I was already thinking about this. And I'm like, competition. <laughs> it seems I'm like, he actually, he might, eat. I don't even know his hunting credentials, but I'm like, my guy is not much of a hunter yet and is really excited to get into hunting. And I'm like, hmm. So who goes first? What do you do? I know. So I can't believe you. So you're doing it this year. Yep. I had no idea. He's doing it. I want to be a part of it. What dates are you thinking? I mean, like, we can talk when this is all over, but, like, I would really like to be a part of it. Obviously, there, there's going to be plenty. In that herd that you were there in the middle of the island, how many mature bulls were there? How many bulls were there? Oh, man. I mean, if we were together, we could have taken two really nice bulls at the same time. Both of the times I was a part of the hunt. It's not... there. You don't see, like, a giant group of numbers, but every group has a few animals in it with a couple of mature bulls. Mm-hmm. So... I, I guess that's like a kind of my concluder is like out of this, what I get is, is a hunt. I wanted to dive in and start talking to, um, some more about like the commercial fishing and some of the other adventures, but like uh, we're going to have to do another one. We're going to have to do Can another we one. just keep this thing going. Absolutely. <laughs> just do it, do it again tomorrow. Yeah. Uh-huh. Why not? I'll, I'll come back in hundred percent. I can go out to the Valley. 
Maybe. I don't know. That's traffic. <laughs> There's traffic. <laughs> Not anywhere around rush hour. So this is this is this is the alpha male like uh in Alaska. It's like, okay, what time do you have? Like, well, something came up, you know what I mean? You never know when you're gonna have timing. Like, I don't know if I'll see you for another six months until hunting season. So I actually next week is really good for me. I'm house sitting and dog sitting for it. The same guy that drew the tag. And oh, he's cool. been That's such a good true. friend of me that uh so I don't have things during the day so I could go to the Wasilla during that time. And so take gonna- dogs. Yeah. Bring in my house. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're going to be here next week as well. Yeah. Okay, cool. Is, is Ruby going to be okay with that? Oh, she's struggling. <laughs> she was here for the weekend. She left last night was rough. Um, tonight she's doing okay. We'll see. It's, it's funny. I called him Thor because I saw it was part of like Elsa and Thor. Like, so mm-hmm. Ruby's got like a substantial personality and that's why we all hit it off. We have so much fun. Yeah. There's a lot of personality there. And we have a lot of fun. Like on our, our muskox hunt was just unreal. One of the top adventures I've ever had in my life. And, um, I'd like to spend time with them, but it's, it's kind of catch me if you can, when people like, uh, the caliber of Derek going out and doing these things, you know, killing his grand slam of sheep, uh, taking out Ruby, getting her into the sport, doing all these big adventures, taking out clients, killing book bears, um, (laughs) taking out Ruby for 10 inch goats, uh, (laughs) killing monster deer. It's just when it catch me if you can. So when you, when you do have these, these, these opportunities, you gotta take advantage of them. That's, um, we've got obviously some good success with the muskox, mm-hmm. and if if this is going to happen, this would be really cool. I'd really like to take advantage of the opportunity to go out and and spend time with you. And if you need a deckhand, um, you know, what are you saying? doing July and August? Yeah, you know, just just saying, I can make some time. You know, <laughs> what about your wife and your baby? <laughs> I'm just going to throw a keeper on my back and bring him out, and make him salty. <laughs> just make <laughs> just get salty. <laughs> I actually, uh, I'll put it online right here. I haven't had the commitment. I, I have a skiff position open. I have a, uh, guy that wants it. It's not been committed. Uh, one of the first times on my boat in a while, I have an open position. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so how do, uh, I'm going to cut this portion out. That didn't officially just get launched. <laughs> yeah. I think that was, I, I mean, think is you're this, pitching that is this right online there. right now? Are people listening to us right now? Or is this later? <laughs> no, I'll post it later. <laughs> okay. Perfect. So yeah. So, uh, posi- <laughs> position <laughs> filled. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming. Tell yeah. Me I don't ever advertise. This doesn't come up. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cause your, your network is vast and deep and the, and the caliber that you know of individuals when you, you make one call and that's kind of like, that's how this works. Once you become yeah, like, once you're in the family, the circle. So, so that's, uh, that's for your commercial fishing. Yeah. Side. That's for my commercial fishing side. And so that's where the, yeah, that's where, he, that's where daddy over here makes the, the big bucks. Basically, it's where daddy is paying his debts and surviving his lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, it's just I'm enduring. When you get it, <laughs> when you get to build that house, because I've seen a lot of posts of like you guys up on the property. We're up on the property. Up on the property. Yeah, we made a fire. <laughs> we have this nice flat pad. Yep, no thing built <laughs> soon. Yeah, hopefully soon. It'd be really cool if you just like like barged a big old boat up there and just parked a houseboat and just dropped the boat and sunk it in. <laughs> he lives this on a boat. He lives on a houseboat. Says. Yeah. It sounds like, yeah, it's, it's a like, pretty cool spot. Yeah. yeah. I won't, uh, I, won't I need a see. trophy room more. Like my taxidermy side is, uh, ooh, getting out of control. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that'll happen. What'd you, yeah. what'd you do with the muskox? Well, so mine is a rug, uh, but there's fake horns in it, and I have the actual horns are a European. Uh, it sat on my table for a while when I had a house. Mm-hmm. Now it's sitting in a box. Ruby's is a life-size hide, tanned, and it's sitting in my freezer. And German mount is ready. Yeah. So we don't know what we're doing with that yet. It's tanned in the freezer. Okay. Yeah, it's ready to go. Cool. Yeah, I've got mine. It finally passed the stink test because you can't pop the cores on them. Mm-hmm. Like you can with sheep. And so, like, my wife just would not let it in. And finally now, like, I've been migrating it around the house. And I know she's not ever going to listen to this, like, ever. She 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 won't tune in. Yeah, like, she would not. Yeah. Especially at this far into it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like even, like, the short film. She'll watch it once through if I make her sit and, like, I'll put it on the TV for her. So, but... Unless it's her muskox. Muskox you know, are cool, though. Her. Yeah. It's such a cool European mount. They're big. 
Uh, so so I've, I finally it's a lot it, of bone. I finally have it up on the coffee table, and it sat there for a while where I originally wanted it. So, what do you uh, what there. do you suggest I do with my big buff that I get? Well, you know, <laughs> do I need to full body? Do I need to shoulder? What? I think on a muskox and a bison, shoulder mounds are ugly. They're just, just a big, huge. It's just block. Mm-hmm. It doesn't look good. But life size, both those look great. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit out of reach, a little bit out of touch for most people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd say tan your hide, do a European. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Make it a, a man throne. That's that's what I thought too. But the old wifey, when I threw the the moose head on the wall she's like i don't know if i like seeing the whole skull so she doesn't know if i want to do a european with it send her over to a house with more mounts than yours yeah she hasn't came over no she likes the shoulder mounts she's like i want it like that i was like (laughs) babe do you know how big that's oh gosh yeah the buffalo yeah it's like my house now with it's the bureaus because I just do my own. It's it's skulls on skulls on skulls. My my wife has made the the bartering chip of well, you can go out and go and kill sheep and goats and a couple of deer here and there, but um, that's about it. You can put any sheep you want anywhere in the house. So that's like my incentive. She knows me. Yeah. So. Speaking of which, your sheep two years ago, maybe it was three. The, uh, your your the bigger mega? one. Yeah. yeah the mega. Is that still going to be life size? <laughs> Are you waiting no. on funds for that, or what's going on? I there? had the funds, but currently I've got a different project that I'm working on, saving for a boat, mm-hmm. where I'm like kind of prioritizing because I'll go get a sheep. And is that another another topic there too? Yeah, that'll we're be we're saving that one. That'll, that'll be another. You know day. what? Boats is seriously that's a podcast right there. We can do a boats one. I want to talk about your boats, the Enchantress. Oh, she is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and you just gotta pay it up. We're gonna have to spend a whole day with this guy and just slice and dice him up. Well, we're gonna be uh, seeing him next week. So well, out in the valley. I mean, I mean, a like full a whole, day. A whole. I mean, a whole, <laughs> a whole yeah. day. Yeah. Well, I want to spend more time. We'll, and, we'll just <laughs> yeah, sprinkle him throughout our whole podcast. I want to come and do a hunt with him. It sounds like. I mean, if we do this. I'll uh, I'll get all the, the permits and everything that we need for filming. I'd really like to produce something if we could make something happen. I'd want to be a part of this buffalo bison bad bison bad. So, uh, well, that's that's all I got. Is I just want to hang okay. out with you more. That's, okay, uh, that's my concluder. Yeah, I appreciate you coming out, man, and I'm looking forward to uh, kind of talking a little bit more with you about. I mean, there's just so much that we could. I mean, we just focused on just a little bit of hunts and your guys' muskox hunts and just kind of looking at your Instagram. It's just full, and there's just so many stories, and um, I appreciate you coming out. Yeah, thank you. It was a good time to hang out with you guys. It's always good to see Austin. Him and I go way back. and uh, Four flats on a Cadillac. We like, go deep. Like you mentioned, there's a lot of personality here uh, on this guy, and uh, <laughs> you throw us two together, and uh, it's it's good. Oh, man. we get, It's always been good. We've had a lot of fun over the years. And it's it's uh, it's same, same, but different. Like There's... You know, yeah, we're we're doing something. We can't, yeah. can't. No, there's and there's some things we're not even talking about. I mean, we all, we always got something going on. That's right. There's and something so, new coming up. I'm I'm still, like I said, I'm still looking up to Derek. He's got his slam. We've been talking about that. Um, if you haven't checked out AK Derek on Pimstagram, you need to go and do that immediately. And then you start looking at the last. I mean, there's there's a lot of photos, but like the last ten years has just been. It's been gold. It's been pretty good. It's it's getting to the point where I actually don't post my photos anymore <laughs> yeah. because I don't want the hater hate over to let people know what I'm doing. Exactly. So well, where is it? It's like you're doing? getting bits and pieces now in the last few years because, uh, yeah, unless you really know me, you're not getting the full story. Mm-hmm. The text message now, <laughs> yeah. it's, the, it's, the D, well, it's the TM. So it's hit him in the TM. So we're going back in time. Where yeah, it's now it's no longer posted. Group. Yeah, <laughs> yep, it's uh, not going out there. I mean, there was a time where Instagram was like, throw it out there. Let's let's go try to have the coolest stuff online. And then when you have it, you got to pull it back. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Let me rein that in. <laughs> yeah, let me yeah. rein that in. Oh, man. Even some of the goat spots, like, things get y- yeah. real. Yeah. I mean... Yep. That's why I'm on. I'm a little bit of a hiatus. So we'll yep. see when I come yep. back online. I just post national some of the progression story, of Instagram. But, <laughs> you know, that's because 
We've got some things. Yeah. Got some things. Yeah, when your content gets up there and it gets a little too juicy, you got to pull it back. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the punch bowl right now, baby. Juice. This <laughs> is the smoothie. Yeah. <laughs> We're in the dole factory right now. That's, that's why you have a girlfriend to let let the girlfriend do it. Let her <laughs> let her put her stuff out there. Mm-hmm. Have fun. People check her. People follow her. So yeah, you can follow Ruby, Ruby Mayflower. Is she is she still is it Ruby Mayflower? It's, I think it's Rube Mayflower, R U B E Mayflower. Rube Mayflower. Okay, sweet. At any rate, um yeah, this is uh it's been great to catch you all up here. Um so, we got everybody's uh logins out there, especially Ruby. Ruby's a character yeah. for all of us. So Yeah, she's a fun so one to watch. Hopefully that video will be out soon on Mission Alaska. I cannot wait to see this. Mission Alaska YouTube. So if you haven't gone to subscribe and it will be able, as soon as it posts, you'll be able to see the notification. So check out Mission Alaska. Thank you. Pray and adventure. We're going to be doing, we're going to do some collabs. It's going to get, uh, this This next year is going to be fun. So mm-hmm. um, we got some good adventures. Yeah, a lot of stuff know, coming up. So, so, some of us drew some good tags. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Want, I don't want to talk about it. I got. Uh, I drew. Uh, what is that? GHT for all of them. Just general harvest tags. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm well, so you know lucky. what? I got to say, of all, if 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 anybody's going to take anything out of one comment, I say is all the sheep I've killed in Alaska are general harvest tickets. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's some juice. We live in the best state it's in terrible. the world. I'm going to stop you there. It's terrible. It's dark. It's snowing outside. <laughs> and I didn't want to second this, but I'm going to do a Derek squared here. Yeah. All of my uh, sheep have been harvested on it, general harvest tickets. And actually, I think I have to go as far as saying my best trophies, all the things that have happened in Alaska that have been the best, I think, are all general. Um, now, Ruby on the other side, she's drawn some tags. She's done some cool stuff, but... I I think all my personal bests are over the counter. Well, that DC five ninety though. <laughs> we'll see what happens it's, there. It's yeah. <laughs> you guys see what I'm doing here? I'm putting all this emphasis uh, well, emphasis yeah. on the draw tag. Stay at home. Everybody, stay stay at everybody home. just draw it or don't go. Draw. Stay, stay in your own. State. Well, you know, as as we know, <laughs> go, if you're going to go over home. the counter, you know. Can you go as far? Can you push as hard? Can you take as much time? It's really, uh, some people get lucky, but most of us just do the hard work. Uh, what is it? 10% of the hunters kill 90% of the game. And you've got 1% of the hunters, which I'm sitting next to the one percenter. And you know, that there's, there's several others that are getting paid. The gifted slayers, I mean, well, several others, obviously, but, um, there are some guys that are really going out and doing it. That's why I can I'm just, I remain humbled because I know the caliber of hunter in Alaska, they're going to get out and, they don't need draw tags for nothing. They're going to go out and go make some things happen. Yeah, so. well, you are a part of that crowd, and we all know that. <laughs> <laughs> I got a stock 2008 F-150, baby. The green machine in a Honda Formula. You got me beat. I got an 07 Tundra. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got an 07 Tundra. <laughs> I, I couldn't even pull your boat with my truck. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't pull my boat. <laughs> you can pull the my skiff. <laughs> the skiff is 10,000 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, all right. Well, uh, it's, it's going to be to be continued. It's yeah, happening. we're going to have to do this again. Well, thanks, um, and uh, cheers. I know we don't got cheers any more Cheers, everybody. Yeah, we'll have to go. Another one, or let's go get some food. Yeah, huh? maybe go somewhere else here. Have some, grab some food. Grab some food, yeah. All right, cheers, guys. Cheers, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Just a tip. Thanks for listening. <laughs>